The best thing that was supposed to come to gaming handhelds is just some crypto nonsense and the broadband internet's getting nutrition labels here in the States and Ryzen 9000 edging closer. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, April 11th, 2024. We're going to start off today talking about something that I was previously incredibly excited for, which was the Playtron OS that was supposed to be coming to gaming handhelds. It was supposed to offer the flexibility and goodness of a Linux-based operating system like you have in SteamOS, but still retain the ability to run games that traditionally only run on Windows, namely with like Epic Games and ones that run on any anti-cheat. You're supposed to get the best of both worlds from a Windows handheld and a Linux handheld, and it was something that was at least intriguing until they unmasked what their first project is going to be, and it's just some Web3 crypto nonsense that likely, if I had to guess, will never see the light of day and disappoints me tremendously, and I probably should have known all along that this was too good to be true, because if Valve can't get things to work, why did I expect some random company that got venture capital funding was going to be able to pull off something different? So, Play 0x1 is the name of the handheld, and it's being brought out by a company known as Mistern Labs, which is one of Playtron's seed company investors, and it just happens to be based on Web3, with them calling the 0x1 the world's first blockchain native handheld game console with SWE ZK login and kiosk SDK's asset ownership directly connected to a device account system for the first time in gaming history. Instant wallet access, setup and funding, mass market simplicity, play everything, blah, 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 nonsense crypto garbage. That's that's what it is, all right? I can understand the applications of crypto and uh, blockchain in certain situations, but as evidenced by, I gotta say, nearly every instance I've seen of crypto being involved in gaming, I'm just not a believer. If the only thing that you get out of crypto is the fact that you can make money, it has no inherent value. That's how I feel about it. I'm just gonna be very vulnerable and honest with you here. It's, it's I, I find this to be frustrating and it's just, this is worse than the KFC console that didn't come out, all right? That was vaporware, but at least it was fun to think about. This, on the other hand, is just, it's got an RGB light at the bottom and looks like a Batarang, but also likely will never come out. Mistin says that it will, however, be available in stores worldwide by 2025. Uh, if it does, I will give one away. I will buy it and give it away if it ever actually does come out in 2025. It won't. I, I'm just, I'm, I feel that in my bones. Um, it's definitely gonna get pushed back, if not never released at all. And if it does get released, it's probably gonna not live up to the specifications of what they hoped it for, which is just tried and true of every Web3 thing that people get excited about. Why did I start off today so spicy? I don't know, but you know what's gonna settle me down? Today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Anchorwork and their S600 speakerphone. While the S600 is called a speakerphone, it's actually so much more. Being outfitted with the same Qi 2 technology and the Anchor's Mag Go chargers means this device delivers delivers up to 15 watts of wireless charging to your phone. And the sleek and modern design of the S600 also makes it super portable and capable of looking at home wherever you place it. Probably the coolest feature Anchor implemented is their local real-time voice recognition. Now, if you're having a meeting, there's no need to mute if someone else around you speaks because the device will only be capturing your voice. Working from home with a family, I know all too well about how noise leaks in when you least want it and whether that's taking a business call or even recording a video here. And on top of eliminating other voices, Anchor's Voice Radar 3.5 AI noise reduction works to remove any unwanted background noise around you, being able to identify over 300 types of noise. The hum of computer fans, the nervous clicking of your pen, or the fact that you're eating lunch during your meeting. No one should hear a thing. You'll also have fantastic audio in any call you join because your voice will be picked up from a four mic array and broadcast at 48 kilohertz. So you'll deliver crisp and clear audio even if you're up to three meters away from the S600. Then once your meetings are over, you can continue to use the S600 in your daily life, whether that's listening to music, watching an instructional video, docking your phone on your desk, improving your personal video calls, or even scrolling through TikTok. It'll all sound great coming out of the five watt speaker in 360 degree audio. If you're interested in improving your work from home setup, then take advantage of the limited time sale currently on Kickstarter with up to 45% off with the early bird discount. Check it out for yourself via the link in the video description. Thanks to Anchor Work for sponsoring today's video. All right, that first story set me off on a wrong tone and I'm gonna continue on that because Windows 11 is gonna be bringing in the only thing that made it better than Windows 10. That's not true, I'm just being overly dramatic for the sake of presentation at this point. Windows 11 does have a lot of nice things about it. I actually kind of like using it, but 
For the sake of being feisty, Windows 11 is bringing ads to the start bar again. They, they got rid of it from Windows 10 to Windows 11, but now it's gonna be there. A promotion tab will now be popping up. It, it was not there for like almost the first two years, three years, how long have we had Windows 11? Doesn't matter, frustrating that it's coming back, nonsense. But to make up for it, Microsoft's bringing some features to the Windows 11 snipping tool. You can add emojis and QR code recognition, and it can correct for HDR, so ads or fixed Windows 11 snipping tool. Hmm? Crafting while lying emoji, laughing while f crying face emoji. This is all good, all good news today. What also appears to be at least some good news is that here in the States, the FCC is bringing tighter regulation to broadband speeds that are coming from internet service providers via the use of nutrition labels, which I thought that this image that's on the screen right now was just like a mock-up render Photoshop thing, but no, that appears to be the way that they're actually going about it with trying to get ISPs to disclose how much they're charging you, what your actual speeds are, what the promotion rates are for your internet connection that you're picking up, and making it so that it's a little bit clearer for the general public. This will apply to any ISP with over 100,000 subscribers, and it's just for greater transparency of everything that's happening. This will start very, very soon with, you can see, disclosing the monthly pricing, whether it's an introductory rate, how long that applies for, the monthly price after the introductory rate, as well as all of the other things that typically apply to your internet speed. Just a clear, simple label. It's kind of weird that it's coming out of the food sector, but I, I can get used to this. I'm okay with this. Let me know what you think of nutrition labels on your internet. Well, I let you know that I want Reese on my internet. He belongs here. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this Epo Maker TH96, a 96% hot swappable wireless mechanical keyboard with yellow switches and a rotary knob for only $77.99 with the coupon applied, making it $52 off. The next up, we have the Superflower LED X3 ARGB 850 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply for only $149.99, making it $50 off. But you get a three pack of Superflower's mega cool 120 20 millimeter fans as a little added extra bonus for you. And then lastly, we have the Anchor Make M5C 3D printer, which is the fastest 3D printer I've ever seen, going for only $239, making it $160 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese Corsair's got a deal for you. They're partnering up with Yestin to bring up some RAM that looks exactly like the GPUs that Yestin's been making with their soccer editions. And it's it's waifu themed. It's kind of, I like the colors. I, I really want more of this like audacious color scheme. A little less of the waifus personally. I understand that that's not the sentiment of everybody in the audience, but what? Well, <laughs> That's what I thought, Kyle. But one of the things I really like about what Yestin does with these GPUs is that they have pizzazz and personality. Like this soccer one down here, the 7900 XTX, we built a PC with that. There's no waifu on that card at all, unless you install a little plate that they give you, which is optional, or you look at the big breasted anime woman who's on the box, which I, I want to have one without the other. I understand why the target market coincides, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of these exciting colors on computer components. I, I don't like the bagage that comes with it. You know what I'm saying? Baggage, but like cleavage, <laughs> clavage. It made sense in my brain. Also, speaking at looking at things, we got the LGA 1851 socket for next gen Aerolake chips from Intel. You want to look at it? Good, that's 1,851 pins, baby. That's what the next gen CPUs are going in. That's the news, somebody took a picture of it. But Intel did confirm that the Lunar Lake CPUs, which are gonna be based in their next mobile setup, it's gonna be the successor to Meteor Lake, they're gonna have a lot more tops, a lot more, okay? They're gonna have 45 in that NPU, which is a big deal because, especially when it comes to Microsoft rolling out Copilot being run on device, certain AI tasks are gonna require at least a certain amount of tops or terror operations per second in order to run natively on the device. I believe the limit is 40. And then in these new Lunar Lake NPUs, it's gonna have 45 tops. The GPU should have about 50 and the CPU should have about five. So total collective system tops is gonna be 100 and it's gonna be 45 on the NPU so that you can run AI assisted tasks directly on that neural processing unit, which I don't know if Ryzen 9000 is gonna have any sort of neural add-ins. I mean, the mobile chips that AMD has been releasing do have some sort of AI enhanced 
enhancement that they've been promoting because they have to. So it stands to reason that Ryzen 9000 will have that as well, but now it is popping up into some drivers. This AMD PMF or Platform Management Framework driver is showing off that Ryzen 9000 is right there. Look at that. That's going to be the Zen 5 CPU that we're expecting to come out sometime in the second half of 2024, likely going to be unveiled at Computex with a release date that's coming out soon after based on the fact that we're seeing it pop up in BIOS, we're seeing it pop up in drivers now. It appears to be fully baked, fully cooked, and ready to go into this system that you have ready waiting in the AIM-5 socket. Just more details that Zen 5 Verizon 9000 is moving along, ready for you to consume. And I'm gonna consume your comments with my eyeballs and then spit it back out to you in the form of a response. We got Hal saying, I never wanna beta test AI's killer app. I don't know what caused you to say that besides the AI chatbot, and I don't think I mentioned killer apps. Maybe I did. I'm a little confused on that one. But then we got Crowbar saying, as someone who has to deal with chatbots from time to time, it's incredibly frustrating. Most of the time, my problem is not in their responses and they just waste my time. And in the end, an employee sends me an email with an answer slash solution to my problem. Sometimes that answer is wrong slash does not help. Really frustrating. I absolutely understand as somebody who's not inclined to go to support until I have done basic troubleshooting, it definitely feels like I, I'm just outside the wheelhouse of whatever common problem that's happening. But I also had that when like I would call into my ISP and be like, hey, my internet's not working. And then you have to go through an hour of like just turning off your modem, even though you're like, I already did that. It didn't fix it. They have things that they have to go through. It's a, it, I get it. It's likely not gonna get better. Then we got Ross Clark saying, Reese's Mark Zuckerberg impression is really good. He came off a little human, but a little practice, it'll be perfect. I agree. That was very nicely done by Reese. But then we got Fanger Zero giving me an idea I hadn't thought of. If they say after Thanksgiving, before Black Friday, November, it'll be between October 14th and November 29th. Canadian Thanksgiving is October 14th. I forgot about the Canadians. That's that's my bad. I I never suspect them ever whatsoever at all. Then Hill to Hell saying, Brett, I don't peel off plastic or stickers off. I dare you not to peel off the sticker off a CPU cooler. Are you kidding me? Do you, do you not know about this video that I did three years ago? How bad is it to forget to peel your CPU sticker where I actually tested how the temperature differs if you keep it on? Because I, I already did that. So dare me all you want. You not have seen that, video. that only has 12,000 views that was made three years ago that wasn't very good. Oh, how could you have not seen it? Uh, but I did it. I'm a menace, which is exactly what the sentiment seems to be. We got mostly harmless saying, Brett, if you don't peel things off, then what are your thoughts on band-aids? Do you still have a Flintstones band-aid your mom put over that little boo-boo you had when you were six? Peel off the film from your car interior. And then the live action gamer saying, I know it's irrational, but OML does this bug me now that it's been pointed out. It doesn't bug me. I really, it just, I could, I could, I'm nonplussed by it. Jose saying, OMG, you are a monster with protective film. It's just not a, it's not a mental stressor for me. It just, I see it and I'm like, I don't care. If you, if it bothers you, maybe question yourself. Okay, maybe you look deep inside and wonder, what is the fundamental belief that I hold right now that is causing me to be irked by this? And can it be true that somebody else can hold a different belief and that's okay? I don't know. OMG, not that guy saying, I thought Reese lived in South Africa. When did he move to the uncanny valley? S tier comment right there, my friend. That was fantastic. And we got Joshua Parker saying, just curious of your opinion. Do you think we have hit a point in gaming GPUs that we won't be getting performance from new cards without higher wattage demand? Since AMD seems to be staying out of high end and Nvidia wants to continue to demand more power, I feel like quantum tunneling is starting to be a problem. They just can't shrink the processors anymore. I mean, it definitely feels that way, but it's kind of been a thing where I mean, most of the time in kind of the most modern recent human history when it comes to microchips and advancing computing and, and, and processing is it, there's always this fear that we're kind of like getting up to the limit or like we're not gonna be able to figure out how to surpass where we are right now because the technical limits that define where we are right now currently persist. It has been the case traditionally that there is a new method that comes out that enables for uh, workarounds to that issue. I mean, EUV lithography was one in trying to produce the chips. I also remember FinFET by Intel being a big deal. Just the ways that these engineers end up solving these problems. I, it, it, we're dealing with things that have never been done before. So to know the way that we're gonna go on the path forward before it's happened is traditionally not possible. So like, 
yes, it kind of feels like that. It does feel like we're edging up closer to the limits of where the silicon can go, but there also can be ways where uh, we just come up with a new innovative method that uh, surpasses the, the way that we were doing it, but it's on a completely parallel path to where we are right now in terms of chip development. This has happened in so many ways, in so many different regards, in so many different industries, whether it be in agriculture and farming or water management and recycling. The unfortunate hard part about inventing and creating new things is that nobody has done it before, and so there's no way that you can predict how it's going to go. It's just exciting to be part of the journey as it happens. So that doesn't answer your question, but that's my opinion on it. Bye.